Hey guys, welcome to day two of two in Cambridge, where everyone looks and speaks like a Harry Potter character. Not sure if that applies to England as a whole, but certainly in Cambridge it's very much the case. Anyway, this is actually my second time in Europe, the first time actually being just a few months ago. One of my excuses for not updating much is that I was in Europe. Um, this was actually a trip to Italy for about a week. Italy was my first choice among European countries for a few reasons. First of all, um, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5 took place in Italy. I was watching that at the time and kind of wanted to go to Italy because of that. Also, Italy has a lot of great food. I'm really into Italian food. I like Italy's... Uh, it has a lot of really interesting history, culture, art, etc. Um, there's also an inside joke between uh, like Homer Simpson and Hank Scorpio talking about Italy versus France. And um, finally, I really wanted to go to Venice because I'm a huge Aria fan and I was really interested in going to Venice because of that. So I ultimately ended up going to uh, first Milan, then Venice, then Rome over the course of about a week. It was really fast, but you know, still a fun trip. At least today, I want to talk about Venice and specifically gondolas because Aria is a show about gondoliers. You'd think that I, of all people, would want to ride a gondola. But, oh no, after seeing the prices and after seeing the system, absolutely not. My first mistake was thinking that gondolas were a legitimate form of transportation. That is not the case, at least not in modern times. If you want to get from point A to point B, you're going to take some sort of boat that is motorized, either a larger boat called the Vaporetto, or you're going to take a smaller like water taxi, which is just a motor boat that takes you kind of privately from place to place. But a gondola is not something that you use for transportation. It's just a tourist trap, basically. You're just going to ride in a small little circle and get back to your original starting points. And what you're going to pay for this is at the minimum, at a minimum, 80 euros. And that's during the daytime. At night, that goes up to 100 euros. It's really expensive just to ride a boat like you might ride at Disneyland or something. Um, so, yeah, I was under the impression that you could just, like, pay a gondolier 20 bucks, say, hey, take me across the river, and that'd be the end of that. But, nope. It's a huge racket. The prices are fixed by the city or by the, you know, the gondola racket. I don't know exactly what kind of organization is behind it, but the prices are fixed. No negotiation. Either you pay 80 euros or 100 euros or even more if you extend your time. And uh, if you absolutely have to ride the gondolas, you want to split them. So at most, I believe five people can ride the gondolas. You split it five ways. That's like 20 euros each, which I guess isn't so bad. And, uh, you know, at least you're making the, gondole the gondolier work for all that money. Right, so at least do that unless you're filthy rich, in, what, in which case, just do whatever you want. But yeah, the gondolas, huge racket, huge waste of money, don't do it. Spend your money a little more wisely. I mean, everything in Venice is basically a tourist trap. And Venice is a really cool city, don't get me wrong, but it is not a real city anymore. It exists entirely for tourism. Everything there, everyone there is either a tourist or working in the tourist in industry. And that doesn't mean you can't enjoy your time there. Certainly I did. But the gondolas are just much of a bigger tourist trap than anything else, I guess because of the reputation, because of the romanticism behind it. But it's way more expensive than it's worth, at least I imagine it to be the case. So... Yeah, don't do it. Save your money for something else. Anyway, uh, next stop is going to be in Germany, I think a little bit outside of Munich. So uh, yeah, see you next time.